Hey, everybody. Welcome to Dom's Den. Today's guest is a prolific actor that has appeared in over 100 different films and television shows over a span of his nearly 40-year career. And I mean when I say this, he's an actor's actor. He once said, it's pretty simple, pretty obvious that people's first impressions of people are really a big mistake. Everybody, I want you to welcome Vincent D'Onofrio into the den. Welcome, Vincent. Okay. Hey, Vincent. Thank you yes. for coming on, man. Really Great. appreciate it. Good to be here. So I just want to let the audience know that uh, we never really worked together. Uh, we kind of made a connection via Twitter. Yeah. And been friends ever since I I'll call Vincent for, for advice, because that's what he initially did for me in the very beginning. I'll, and, I'll, and I'll circle back to that because there's a, there's a something in the book that, that, and, and I'm loving this by the way, and yeah. Ethan Hawk hit the nail right on the head when he finishes, um, he writes, he goes, and this shit needs to be published. <laughs> it's a, it's, it's a. It's crazy, right? It, it's, it's, it's crazy, but it's fucking brilliant. It's brilliant. It's especially, I love the animal stuff. Yeah. Um, how did this come about? We were doing actually speaking of Ethan, Ethan, and a friend of ours, Jonathan Sherman. You might know Jonathan Sherman, don't you? Do you Sounds very familiar. Writer? I don't think I met he's him. A, he's a playwright. Right. Um, anyway, they wanted to to um, this theater stuff. So if you guys fall asleep, I'll wake you up after it's done. But uh, uh, the um, so he wanted to uh, Jonathan and Ethan wanted to do an adaptation of Bertolt Brecht's play called Ball B A A L which is a very kind of, people call it avant-garde, but it's really just a, a very unique piece of theater where there's, they drop the fourth wall at times and stuff. It's, it's stuff that was done, it was ahead of its time, the play. And, but it was about a particular character, a one man character with a, uh, with a big supporting cast. So they decided to, uh, Jonathan Sherman uh, did the adaptation. They called it Clive. Ethan directed it and started it starred in it and myself and a bunch of other actors um did it did it with him and while we were doing it we sold out the new group uh, every night i think and um uh there was a lot of musicians and a lot of uh instruments and and uh, actually the set was all these doorways the frames and door doors that opened and closed and all of those doors were instruments you could actually play like bass guitar piano, uh, lead guitar, like there was all these kind of, the doors were made into instruments. I have one of them, a xylophone version of one of them hanging in my office and the, the whole door. And, yeah. uh, and so during that, I started to write something that I had never done before other than um, uh, writing a synopsis of a screenplay that I might hire a writer to do or something like that, you know, but I never wrote fiction or, 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 or just like, um, I never wrote a journal. I never wrote pieces like poetry or, or anything like that. I, I just started to write on my phone during rehearsal and then into the show. And every once in a while, um, because we all just fell in love with each other, all the actors, um, we would, they, somebody would, I'd give one to somebody and they'd read it for the, for the cast. And then they got passed around. And then one of the musicians, Dana Lynn, who's a composer and musician herself, she she liked she fell in love with them and she asked if I, she could put them to music. And I had by then I had hundreds of them, and so we actually put out two albums called uh, Slim Bonehead Volt, which is an anagram, but you guys can figure that out on your own. And we used to sell out uh, Joe's Pub every night. We would do. And we only performed in one place, Joe's Pub, because I didn't want to like do anything silly like tour or anything like that. But it was um, it was so much fun. And then I just started to write and I continued to write and write and write and write and write. And I've accumulated so much of it that um, that's how the book came about. Yeah. Ethan, Ethan had mentioned that, uh, you know, morale was kind of low. And he, he also says, uh, he, he goes, if people 
if people are not disturbed by this play, we are not doing our job. <laughs> it's totally right. right, right. And and I don't know. He mentioned that morale was low, and and um, he kind of didn't have any. He was out of words of encouragement at that particular time. And you just came out. You go. Uh, I wrote. You know. I I wrote something in my journal today. And it just, it was an ongoing thing that, that Vincent yeah, did awesome. during the play to keep everybody. It was kind of like part of their routine. And, uh, and, and hence Ethan's like, this shit needs to be published. <laughs> now what's so, the, what's the name of the book for those who aren't yeah. watching, who are just listening? It's mother, well, right? Mother, mother, stuff and things. Mother stuff and things. Dom was actually reading me a, a really cool passage. Well, I picked it out. I yeah. picked it out because and, and I and I want to read it. I, I want to read it, but uh, don't hold me to uh, dyslexic. So, uh, I might <laughs> I fuck up. The great I, I might fuck up. But fucking up is part of the fun. I would like to, <laughs> I would like to read read some of them. That would be awesome, dude. Well, this one particularly uh, spoke to me. Is it the, the, shit and useless? That is that. It's one? pigs can't look up. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a very popular one. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, crazy on Twitter that one. Yeah, pigs can't look up. Pigs can't look up, but I could pick a pig up. One night I raised it into the sky and tilt this pig ever so gently. I can make sure this pig's eyes line up with the stars. Imagine seeing the stars for the first time. I want to be treated that kindly and see the stars for the first time. Mm. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> and so the reason this one uh, spoke to me and, it, and I think it, it, well, it is my favorite. Um, Vincent, I, I had done a podcast and Vincent, I think watched maybe a clip of it that was on Twitter or something like that. And I spoke about, uh, my career and just navigating my way to where I was now and, and everything like that. Yeah. And I get a message from Vincent saying, if you ever need to talk to me, if you ever need advice, if you ever need this, I, I know he kind of understood where I was coming from and I never forget it. He just, uh, I, I, I mean, we, we, ironically, we, we worked together, but we never did work together. Right. We worked together on sim, uh, two shows, um, but we never had any um, correspondence, you know, talking or anything like that. And he reached out to me and, and, uh, and it was very important. Then later on, he helped me with this monologue that, uh, that I put out that uh, people really dug that Brian, shout out to Brian Koppelman for writing it for me. Uh, fantastic writer. Um, so that's. So Vince was there in case you ever needed someone to help you tilt your head up. <laughs> See the stars. Well, he picked me up. Calling him a pig? He picked me I'm up. I'm not calling him a pig. But <laughs> he's, he's picked me up. I, I'm not going to get into it because it's, it's a little personal, but he's yeah. picked me up a few times. It's awesome. But uh, he's he's hey, that kind of guy. And yeah, um, also, you have to include that. Um, not only is it is it a wonderful thing to happen between two peers, right? You and I, but it's yeah. also something that happens all the time. Wonderful things like this happen all the time between artists. Um, this is not, it's not sexy and it's not dark. So nobody ever really talks about that kind of stuff. But um, all of my career artists of all kinds have put their hand out to me and said, you know, and reached out to me and said, look, I'm, you know, I'm here take my hand if you need it right and you know nobody ever talks about it but that's it's like i didn't wake up one morning and said and say geez i should help dominic you know he's a perfectly capable man he can do anything he wants himself you know but I, but it's a it's a it, it's just not something that people talk about it happens all the time and the reason why i'm i'm used to doing stuff like that is because of what was done for me when um, throughout my career and by the way, hopefully again, you know, at some point. Pass so, it forward. Yeah, it's yeah. An act of, an act of kindness. It's, yeah. We need more of that in the world. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of that kind of stuff in our business um, 
because I'll be the first to admit there's some real fucking assholes in our business. And uh, I mean, you know, I'll yeah. just shoot it there. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll just uh, say that. Right there. <laughs> yeah. There's assholes minute, throughout the, minute, the world. The minute, after, the minute I say a sentence like that, I, my mind fills up immediately. <laughs> <laughs> uh, stories and events. Um, and, and it's like, you got to like shut it down, you know? Um, so, so, but, but even though that that's the case, um, people would, I, I believe would be truly surprised about how legitimate and wonderful some of these actors and actresses are that are our peers in this business. I mean, Mm-hmm. You know, I've had so many incredible experiences. And so, the, you know, that's just another one between Dominic and myself. You know? I, I, and I, it was brought to my knowledge that uh, I didn't know that you you taught acting. Yeah. And uh, we both know Tim Monarch. And and uh, he's like, you, you, you know, he's 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 uh, he's he's like uh, at, at, he he teach acts. He teaches teaches acting he's a fantastic teacher and then um he helped me with this this monologue and look he he would tweak it here he would tweak it there and he would bring me where i needed to be for for certain moments and man i i I wish i I, you know i would take a class i would i would sign up for a class in a heartbeat but i i want you to talk about the work that you do with that and I don't. I don't know if you want to go that far into it, but um, well, I mean, it's not. It's not. It's not that difficult to discuss. I'll. Well, I'll try not to be boring. I'll be brief. The the the. Um, you know, I started teaching a. It's like, I think about twenty five years ago, and I've taught consistently. I first started to take over my mentor's class, Sharon Chatton, who was my was the first person who taught me method acting in New York. And, you know, I've since become a, a lifetime member, but back in the day, she was a, a lifetime member of Actors Studio and still is obviously. And, and so she was one of the top um, people over there. And she had this incredible group of, small group of actors in New York for a long time that studied with her and I, and I was one of them. And I could name off people that you guys would know that were in that class too, but I, that would be silly. But, um, uh, and some of them still suck like they did back then. But the, <laughs> the, the, uh, the uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, so, so that was basically my training before that. I was with uh, Sonia Moore. Sonia Moore was the woman who wrote all the books about Stanislavski for America. Like every thing yeah. about the Stanislavski system of acting, she wrote everything. And she had a company for a long time in New York of um, where she would, you were only allowed to use the Stanislavski system of acting and do those to do the classics like Chekhov and Tennessee Williams and Clifford Odets and like, she would only do classics, American classics and Russian classic, classics. Um, those, those two countries only. And we would tour and do plays back to back in one night and stuff like that. And um, that was where I was first. And then I got into method acting after that through Sharon. And so as I got older and I started to work a lot, I, I missed um, the class atmosphere. So I went back to class for a while, but it was, it was too difficult um, it's not, it, I felt like, I felt that it was a distraction in class, right? you know, cause it was, it was people really struggling. Um, like I was at that time in my career, they were still at it and, and, and supposed to be still at and were still at that point when I was younger, they were all that age when I was younger in their early twenties. And I just, it just wasn't right. And so I asked her, you know, could I take a class over and teach it? And so I started teaching her classes when I was in town in LA, she's in LA now. And, um, and that led to uh, me just walking by the, um, uh, the Strasburg Institute on 15th street in New York. And as I was walking by, you know, it has this red door that's always been there since I was a kid. 
and I'm walking by and before I get to Washington, uh, to, to Union Square, I'm like, I should fucking go in there and ask if they would let me be a teacher. <laughs> and so I turned around and I went in and the lady at the desk um, said, you know, can I help you? And I said, who runs this place? She goes, well, Anna Strasberg is not here right now, but the woman who actually runs it is Victoria Crane. Um, who, and I knew, I knew that name from years and years of Actors uh, Studio alumni and, um, and anybody that was close to the Strasberg family, the actual family. And uh, so they showed me to her office and she just happened by luck to be the most lovely woman in the world. Like she was like so fucking amazing. And um, I said, what would you think um, if I taught for free? And she, she was just like, no, 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 no. I'm like, yes, 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 yes. She goes, no, 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 that doesn't, the school doesn't. And I'm like, no, look, like I could teach method acting. I mean, I don't mean just come for one night. I mean, do a full course when I can. I'll do a full course. And you don't have to pay me. You could, though, if you wanted to, give a two-year scholarship away every year. That's amazing. That is, <laughs> this, is, this, is, amazing. this is why I, I brought this up, because yeah. I, I think this is amazing. Oh, wow. Yeah. And Victoria, because she's so cool, it took her about five minutes for it to sink in, because she was in the always in the mode when it came to um, actors that wanted to visit, that it would be like a, two hour evening where they're on stage and there's just a lot of silly questions. You know? mm -hmm. And so, um, but this wasn't, I, I didn't want to do that at all. Although I did do that a couple of times, but I was at, while I was teaching only because it's so much fun for the actors. Um, Cause I'm such a smart ass and you know, it's not exactly <laughs> a situation. So, so um, no, so I ended up teaching. I ended up teaching steady. In fact, I ended up teaching my daughter there, and I could go down the list of people that are working um, now that that I taught, and I and I still do. I mean, the whole COVID thing kind of threw everything for a loop. So I right. I did a bunch of classes um, all line online on Zoom, which was amazing because um, this was at the beginning. This is the first year or first six months of um, in New York when things were pretty bad. Um, I had these amazing classes, like one kid would be in Egypt, one girl would be in Italy. I was teaching people, uh, kids in Mexico. I remember this uh, Indian yeah. kid, he, 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 he introduced me to his parents and, you know, you know, the, the, you know I was teaching people that lived on, with, on dirt floors, you know, like it was amazing, Incredible. Yeah. amazing. And taking them through a full course of, of method acting where they're sitting, you have to, Donna, can imagine this. They're sitting in a straight back chair in some room that's only a paper thin wall away from the whole family where wow. dad is doing, you can hear the family, you know, dynamics going <laughs> on around them. And they're like pouring their heart out and crying during this monologue. Meanwhile, you know, somebody's arguing, arg arguing over pots and pans in the other room. <laughs> it, it was fantastic. It was amazing. That's, yeah. that, and, the, that, and a lot of, and, uh, yeah. That's the, that's the beauty of, and I've, and I've said this before on the podcast because for me, Acting has always been a therapeutic kind of thing. I forget everything else when 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 I'm acting. So I I I can, you know, you would think the kid would be embarrassed to be in a, in, in another room pouring. Is that what I don't, I'm not sure what kind of scene he's doing, but whatever he's doing anywhere else, he would probably be embarrassed. But he's so submerged into that character, trying to get that guy. You you don't care. You're in the zone, man. You don't care. Yeah. And, and 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 I I know that feeling. Yeah, I know that there there are things I've done in front of the camera that I will never ever ever do, or feel comfortable doing in my everyday yeah. life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right, right. yeah, I know that feeling. That's yeah. a beautiful feeling. You're in a different. It really world. is. Yeah, yeah. I mean really? that's that, that's that's you know they say with golf you know you hit the ball you have that one great shot and that's what brings you back to play golf yeah. for me that's that that's what it is for acting i'm still trying to hit the great shot yeah well <laughs> 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 
<laughs> um, every day on a set and trying to get that great shot. Um, yeah. The, the, uh, and failing and failing and failing. And then, you know, all those failures within that failure, there's a moment that's actually usable. And that's ended up to be my performance. <laughs> I, 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 I want to talk about 2019. You directed the film, The Kid, with Ethan Hawke and Chris Pratt. Yeah. Sure. Now, now you're in the director's chair. Any changes in, in, did you have to separate, you know, yourself as the actor? No. Um, no, these guys, I, I mean... Well, Ethan, I know you have a relationship with. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, the, the everybody. I have a relationship with with uh, everybody by the time we start shooting. It's like, um, you know, I would just keep the camera rolling um, and I would just walk into the scene. You know, I didn't give a shit what they want. And I, I would just walk into the scene while the camera is rolling and just start. If whoever I thought was missing a beat, very similar to the way that, that, that we spoke about things, you and I, um, I, I, I would just get their attention, you know, and I look at me, look at me, and I would just start talking to them and take them to another place um, that has nothing to do with the movie, has nothing to do with the character, has nothing to do with anything that must be seen or should be seen by an audience, like so far on the other side of that, to get them to a place of um, just one person looking into the eyes of another me and, and them or her and I or, or him him and I and and then start to speak to them uh, of, uh, of very specifically about the place that they should be when they should be there very specifically and not in any kind of rushed way or any kind of know-it-all kind of way, just in a way where I could gently turn them into the, in, towards the, the right thing, the way that in an, emotion, in an emotional sense, rather than in a directorial sense, to get them into the right emotional area that was theirs only, not mine, but to just to kind of push them in there. And then I would just walk out and I would say, start again and just start again. And that, I mean, that's how I directed every scene. It works. Like an emotional. Works. He, did, he did it with me and uh, it, is it works. Is it like an emotional reboot? Like, no, it's- Get out of the zone. I, 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 I'm not gonna go into what I mean, it was. It's really, but... it's, really, it's really about this and you really can't, you really don't, it's really hard to explain what it is, but it's, it's really just method acting, but mm -hmm. without all the, the text. Like it's really just cutting right to the chase of what, of what method acting is. And basically method acting is, is, is not what Daniel Day Lewis does or uh, Daniel Day Lewis is brilliant and he does his own thing. And the people that try to emulate what he does are idiots because they're just fooling themselves and they call it method acting. It's not, mm -hmm. it's just Daniel Day Lewis is a fucking genius. Mm -hmm. you know? Right. Um, but that's not method acting. Method acting is all about relaxation. You come in and out of character. You, I never take my characters home. But, but yeah. particularly what we're talking about here is we're talking about the idea of uh, it was an awesome speaking subject. the author's words, right. speaking the author's words through an event, a person, a thing that happened in the most specific way in your life to have that going on inside yourself and you speak the author's words through that. Yeah. It's, yeah, it you, makes you, sense. You think of something that's off subject yeah, yeah. to what you're, you're doing. Yeah. It doesn't have, to have anything to do with the story. No, like it had nothing to do with, but it's a, it's a, it, it, it's basically a place that you channel. You want to be in the go character. to it. Yeah. You, you don't have to express it. You don't express it. It's, it's, it's really, it's very internal. Yeah. And and it get and it and it and it gives you for me it made me smile made me happy yeah. for, for what I was for, for for that for that particular monologue that I was doing. I mean, it's not easy. It, it's it, not it, it, it's very hard because on yeah. top of that, you have to know how to hit your mark. 
not right. screw anybody else's performance and you know get your cues right you can't waste a lot right. you can't waste everybody's everybody's time right. right and dramatic pauses need to be earned yeah got it yeah so uh, and that's where this this uh technique or this this thing that that vincent helped me do helped me earn those pauses yeah. in the right places mm-hmm. Wow. Follow me. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. So it's, um, it's like, a, you know, acting can be very technical because it just has to be stage acting for its reasons and film acting for its reasons. And, and so it's it's always been really important for the actor to have a place to be living inside all that technicality. And if you're faking it and you're doing all the technical stuff, you either end up looking like a robot or people yeah. fall asleep in the fucking audience. You know? Yeah. 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 It's nothing worse than working with somebody yeah. who's looking, who's listening for that Q word. Yeah. If you, you don't know, believe you, it, you know, the it, also leaves you, it also leaves you in a very precarious place where you can fail instantly or, or have, or a happy accident happens and it becomes the best part of your performance. Like, and all the actors and actresses that we love over all these years, there are so many times in, in their performances that stuff has happened by accident that we think has been a brilliant choice of theirs. But in fact, it just happened in one take, one time. And- well, you, you, you've told the story of when uh, I, I, I think you were shooting a scene um, and you had your back to uh, Kubrick. Kubrick, like, uh, yeah. Like, <clears throat> yeah. And then he, you were doing a scene, and he's like, "I want you to go home and and uh, uh, what was it, Karen? Um, Long Cheney, is it? Long t- Channel, uh, Long Cheney for that for that. Yeah. You were shooting a specific scene. Yeah, we were doing oh, the yeah. scene in the bathroom where I the right. bathroom yeah. scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. So, it, you know, and at it, home, when he said that, at home at my flat in London, um, this is. You know, there obviously was only videos back then. I had a stack of uh, black and white horror movies. You know, there was no, I had no idea that he was going to say that to me or anything. And, and a few of them were Lon Chaney movies. You know, it was like such a crazy, like, I think we were talking about, I always talk about it in terms of being like a Christmas gift. You know, it's like, holy shit. Like that only happens a couple <laughs> times in your career. You know, uh, where but that's part of his brilliance, right? Like Chris knew that. Yeah, totally. He knew that. I remember seeing the first part of that film as a kid. That's oh it's, my god, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I mean, it's one and, of my favorite and uh, the fact, films. The fact that he could just emit that emotion right through the tube, right into your body. It's like holy shit. Yeah. You know. And and it affects different people differently. Like my wife, we were talking about it, and she he's like, Oh, yeah, he was the bad guy in, in Full Metal. I was like, no, he wasn't the bad guy. He was tormented by the drill sergeant. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's, it's kind of like what you said, a super yeah, villain, right? Yeah, yeah. My, yeah, my wife still thinks it's two different uh, movies. She's like, I like the first movie better. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Stuff. Personally, I like the first part better. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just incredible. It's one of, those, one of those when it comes on, you know, no matter what you're doing, you, have to like, watch you just stop yeah. and you're well, like, was, all right, wherever it is, I'll watch was it. Was Kubrick well we all know visually very specific right beautiful yeah. beautiful shots i mean barry Lyndon, you look mm-hmm. at i mean that movie it's, I mean, it's, it's like a, a portrait within a portrait Fucking right space odyssey and oh my god Crazy. was he like that Jeez. uh when he was directing you Clockwork. oh no 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 stanley never talked about character never talked about story no 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 no, no. okay never would say anything ever was the script yeah. different too, or the the no, script layout? No improvisation. I mean, if it, we would sometimes we would have to rehearse because of um, either Stanley wasn't sure if the scene worked, or um, I won't mention any names. But somebody didn't know their lines or something like that, and and um, because they just had two fucking main lines, and and. Uh, so we would end up rehearsing and sometimes during rehearsals, you know, if you have clever actors or also arrogant actors like myself, you know, you, no matter what anybody says, you still feel that you're, you know, the obligation to add some of your shit, you know, 
into it. And, uh, and the other actors on the set were uh, the same type of actors. And, um, and sometimes um, we would come up with some pretty good stuff. And Stanley would then get his typewriter out and he would write it and reissue the script, but it written exactly what you said in, when you improvised and then you could not change it after that. That's cool. Right. <laughs> didn't he also, didn't he also, uh, I think you guys uh, were, I'm not sure which one of his movies, uh, but I, they were rehearsing the scene. They were rehearsing, 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 rehearsing. And then he said, you know what? We're going to do it tomorrow. Yeah. So he, it built this anticipation with the actor <laughs> and then the actor <laughs> had to go home and constantly think about certain things, but it was part of his genius. Yeah. His genius was, okay, he's going to come here yes. tomorrow and, and he's going to, he's going to have that thought in his head, which was right for the character. Mm -hmm. But he purposely said, you know what? Oh, we're going to pack it in today. We'll come back tomorrow and do it. <laughs> Go home and drive yourselves insane for 20 yeah. hours. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. come back prepared. <laughs> That's. I, yeah. I mean, you know, some of these, you know, you never end up knowing when it comes to guys like that. And also when it comes to actors and actresses too, who are amazing. Um, you, 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 you never end up knowing in the end what was actually thought out by them and what was just, they were constipated or, do you know what I mean? Like, like <laughs> you really don't know whether it was genius or just life that made them do what they did at the time. You know, you just don't know ever. And, and it's the, the idea that we, um, when working with people, as we all are coming up with stuff in a scene on the day on a set, it's amazing that I always find it amazing that those questions are never asked amongst, amongst each other to each other. We just all accept greatness, however it comes and thank the film gods or acting gods that it was actually, right. perfect, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and uh, cause it doesn't always happen, obviously. So you never, you know, with Stanley wasn't any different. You never knew, um, like some days, I swear to God, some days we, Matthew and Arliss and I would be on set and we would just, we could see the way he got out of his car that day. You know, his pant leg might've been tucked into his sock or something and, or, you know, his hair was all scrunched up and, <laughs> and we would just look at each other and go, we're not going to work today. We're not going to work. <laughs> Freaking love he's genius. Gonna all day, he's going to spend all day shoot, uh, 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 lighting a shot that's probably going to end up to go down in history, you know, and we're all just going to have to wait until he feels like shooting it, you know, what yeah. I mean? fine line between madness and genius. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. And the, the, the thing about artists, the wonderful thing, thank God about artists is that you just say, fuck it. They're artists, you know, let them do whatever they want to do. <laughs> that's great. You have a, a couple of films in post-production, the, uh, the eyes of Tammy Faye, uh, we want wow. to talk about you oh, playing yeah. uh, Jerry Falwell. Uh, Falwell. Oh, I mean, God. this guy, this guy was a character. In himself. Holy shit! But um, I, you want to? Can you? Can the you trailer. Talk about, yeah. Can you? Can you talk about you prepping yeah. for that guy? Um, oh, I mean, sure. Yeah. 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 Some uh, crazy. Uh, it's insane. I mean, the, insane. Yeah. Insane. This whole movie seems amazing. And, it's an amazing premise to me. Like the beginning of television. Oh, you guys you know? have no idea what. It's I, I mean, can't wait. Just, How'd you I get mean, into that? I mean, Jessica, <laughs> Jessica and Andrew, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I can't say too much because I don't want to give anything away, but my God, their performances are just, you, the, yeah. first of all, you can't, I mean, you usually can't take, I mean, I can never take my eyes off Jessica just because she's so beautiful. She's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, the combination of those two things is just like, it's almost too much sometimes. And, um, you know, she reminds me of like when I first saw Meryl Streep act, you know, I was mm -hmm. just like, oh my God, how can this thing exist? How can this person exist? Yeah. How does this happen? You know, I can remember seeing uh, Meryl Streep and um, what was the, what was the in Manhattan, was, was it in Manhattan where she played uh, his ex-wife? Um, not Kramer uh, versus Kramer, Kramer, right? Kramer, Kramer, Kramer. Kramer. Yeah. She, was in, she was in a Woody Allen movie too. 
Um, anyway, I, it was one of those movies and I remember watching her for the first time and I remember thinking, oh my God, this, we're going to see a lot of this lady. This lady is going to yeah. be like mega. Oh, yeah. you know? She was great in the deer hunter. Deer hunter right behind you. There yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's the Italian um, poster. poster. Yeah, it's actually an original from Office Theater from when it premiered. And you can't see it, but down below it says Il Cacciatore, you know, in Italian. <laughs> and, uh, I, that was the Woody, it was Manhattan. Yeah, yeah. Manhattan. And Manhattan, he was Manhattan. in Manhattan. She played, yeah. um, who, his, his wife, who was a lesbian, ended up, uh, ended up to, uh, in a happy marriage with a woman. And, you know, and, and, and Woody Allen's pathetic self, he couldn't, couldn't get over that. And, oh, yeah. and, uh, in a character in that in that movie and um i just remember you know jessica reminds me of that kind of you know she yeah. comes from that ilk you know I, i'm just saying that in 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 the eyes of tammy faye you what you can't take your you can't take your eyes off her i mean it's such a fallout character and, and you know the prep for jerry falwell was was wasn't that difficult the the getting his his virginian accent down mm-hmm that wasn't that difficult. He was, he was one of those guys who talks like he's educated. He went to a decent Christian college, but um, he's just one of those guys from, from over there that they speak in this kind of really kind of weird accent that doesn't really exist. It's sort of like them trying to make their down home accent posh, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And so he would, he would over, you know, and he would, um, he would push his inflections and mm-hmm. end sentences with slight, a little buzz at the end. Like when, instead of saying Jim, he would say Jim, you know, like that mm-hmm. kind of thing, like just mm-hmm. like a little bit of a mm-hmm. yes. weirdness flair to it that he thought, I guess he sounded educated. And then, and then it was just his, um, his ego. I mean, he, the guy was, uh, insane. Up, insane. Up, puffed up chicken, you know, puffed mm-hmm. up rooster, no matter where he was. He was so crazily egotistical and narcissistic. I find it so interesting to see, like, you know, when when free-spirited actors have, you know, they go and they climb into a role of the most close-minded and yeah. pompous and arrogant. You sent me down this wormhole of, like, looking at things that I, I've for pretty much forgotten about Jerry Falwell. And then yeah. when I saw that, I was like, oh man, yeah, I gotta go so. relook, I gotta go relook up some of his oh, quotes. The whole AIDS thing. Oh my God, just let yeah. me say, he goes, uh, AIDS is not just God's punishment of homosexuals. It's his punishment of a society that tolerates homosexual. I'm like, oh my God, this mm-hmm. guy had such a platform too. It's insane. Oh, millions yeah. and millions oh, really of followers. Homosexuality was gonna ruin the, the world, was gonna destroy the world. Yeah. That's what he really Same. believed it. Yeah, and, and also, meanwhile, he took these people down from just pure narcissism, just from pure ego, <laughs> he took Baker's down, where he was doing just as much nonsense financially, you know, um, what do they call it? Uh, uh, in-house, you know, selling, you know, what do they, mm-hmm. what do they call it? Um, there's a term for it, where they, would, they, they sell properties back and forth to each other and accumulate flooding or laundering laundering no 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 it's a different term um i'll think of it in a minute but but um yeah and and yet he still took these two down who were who made so much people so many money and so much money and was where they were totally like especially her she was you know she was a pretty i mean she was a little nutty for sure right and (laughs) and um to say the least Say but, the least. <laughs> you know, it's true that she was a progressive, though. Was it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, she was a Christian, but she was a progressive. She she had the first interview of a, a of somebody with AIDS live on the Seven Hundred Club, and really? yeah, live speaking to them about their disease and about how people should not be thinking that. Um, you know, that they're, that they're evil or that you can, you can go up to these people and hug them and not catch the disease. You know, she was really, like, she really did. She's a dynamic character. Good causes. Like she really did. And, mm-hmm. and, and um, but still they were making money off of people sending their last little bit in the bank to them. Yeah. yeah. Still doing it today. So it's still just, it's, it's still the, going whole, on, yeah. the whole Baker evangelistic thing is obviously so hypocritical. It's, it's, 
hypocrisy on top of hypocrisy. But it, that's why the movie is is so interesting because it rides. I can't wait. Yeah, I gotta watch that. Line, yeah. I can't wait to see it. Yeah. Um, do you do you always? Uh, I mean, as far as getting roles, do you gravitate towards the villain darker role, or have you ever? I mean, does that come to you, or do you go looking for it? Well, sometimes I'll go looking for it. Yeah, you like it. Sometimes I, I do. like yeah. it. I like it. Sometimes. I love the ducks. <laughs> I do. Yeah, yeah. Then, I know I what you mean. Say that that um, before the whole uh, streaming thing started. Um, before that, I used to try and find them. Yeah, because mm -hmm. because there was less t television being made, obviously. And there was, and I was still making my my living off of doing films, and because I wasn't in the handful of, of major stars ever in my career, that that so I was just one of those actors that hovered around that you know whatever those major stars were doing at the time, you know, movies, and and that's how I've spent most of my career. And um, the so I knew obviously that the most interesting roles are going to be the baddies and good films, you know? So that was not a, you didn't have to be a genius to know that. And, and, but then, you know, but then the, then the streaming started and stuff. And so now there's, there's much more opportunity to do all mm. kinds of stuff. So I really don't, I don't really don't seek out stuff. I mean, mm. the, the, the Marvel, the Jeff Loeb who used to run Marvel television, he, he, they came to me to play Wilson Fisk in yeah, Daredevil. Daredevil. Um, that wasn't even on my my radar. Nice. Yes. Talk yeah. about dark. Yeah, yeah so. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I love it. That's therapeutic. <laughs> well, I mean, I, 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 that's 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 one of the projects that I I I worked on, but not with Vincent, but I played mm -hmm. uh, uh, Fisk's father. Yeah. In a flashback, pretty much to, Young to show mom, right? Yeah, and basically to show how this this kid became to be this man, and and it was difficult. I, I have to tell you, it was very dark. Yeah, playing a scene with a little kid like that, who was a he was a fine actor. Um, but yeah, heavy stuff, heavy, heavy stuff. Hey, yeah, you know, you, you go back and you're checking, man. Oh man, I, I, I don't want to do this. I don't want to call this kid. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. And, um, but <laughs> those well, you kids are pros. You have to do it. It, it still and, makes you sick to your stomach when you go, yeah. out, but you do it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you absolutely. Have, you imagine, you know, that imagine this, a kid having to kill their father with a hammer. You know what I mean? That's like unbelievably <laughs> dramatic. Like God, you know, Crazy. nothing quicker. <laughs> How tortured you have to feel to do something yeah, like that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Right. It's, Whipping your mom with a belt. How messed up of a life. I, you it, just, it was, to, yeah, just it was, uh, yeah. It's enough to make a guy into a beast. Yeah. You know? Shout out to Stephen the night. Yeah. Yeah. That kid grew up to be a monster. Um, you know, you know, I have to say, I, I really sympathize with what you're saying, Dominic, about playing the father because in his treatment of this son, because, you know, in Godfather of Harlem, you know, I'm far, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a truly what you would call a bleeding heart liberal. And um, in, fact, in fact, I'm soaked in blood. I'm so, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's ridiculous well, how far left I can get. Not a, not a, a radical way, but in the sense of, um, I mean, I've never been a radical liberist, uh, liberal, like, or um, a severe activist or anything, but I mean, just the, um, you know, just, like, you know, uh, civil liberties and, and equality and, mm -hmm. And you know all right. the and you know uh, gay rights and and, and uh, for my whole life have been right. part of my life you know and and, uh, and I've had you know that are part things that have happened to me and my family and and all that so it's it's like you couldn't be any more liberal than that but but in Godfather of the Harlem you know I'm playing um, you know my relatives from back in the day you know. And uh, the guys that I, you know, the uncle, some of my uncles and my aunts, and you know, and uh, I remember in the first season. Just so the audience doesn't know, it's Vincent the Chin Ganti. Oh yeah, Ganti. Yeah. 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 yeah, and your family's from Naples, right? 
Yeah. Original. Yeah. 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 But I mean, yeah, but, but, but Brooklyn. But I, yeah, it's, it's, Mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, I, I grew up on Arthur Avenue. I, I grew up in the Bronx. I grew up in Brooklyn. Like I understand yeah. that environment. We spoke about this. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, like I was, you know, there was several points in my life where I was like this far away from buying into the whole thing. Mm-hmm. You know, if it wasn't for the arts and music and right. uh, and certain women uh, that I were in, that I was influenced by, um, I could have easily gone that way full blast. You know. Um, luckily, I was somehow, I don't know how, considering where I'm from, but I was intrigued by this other side, this more creative artistic side of life, which then brings all this color, you know, um, something that other things can't do. And, and I, but I remember, you know, uh, in the first season, you know, it was tough. You know, I was saying the N word so many times a day and right to their faces. And we have, you know, uh, right, right into the actors that I've been in awe of for so many years, you know, and, and, um, and you know me, like, I don't hold back, you know, and, and Chris Brancato, the writer, you know, he does, you know, that was like the deal that him and I made for me, if I was going to do it, that we were not going to hold back because then what's the point. Yeah. And, uh, but Dom, like some of those nights on the way home being driven, I'm like sitting in the, it man. rents a lot of space in your head. It does. I, I, I when I when I did the wire and I played uh, Herc and I, I think yeah. three or four straight episodes or whole season. All I did was get out of a car. They they're supposedly a, a flex squad, mm-hmm. and just tune these guys up on the corner yeah. and like just because basically do everything that you're seeing on TV oh, yeah. that's happening right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and get away with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and. I was like, man, I'm just so sick and tired of fucking beating people up. You Imagine know, if that and was your job, job. Because I felt like a bully. Yeah, yeah, but that's what I was. I was a bully. Because that, that, but that's that that feeling you have, which both of you, I'm sure, it stems from such a mutual respect for the actors. It's like you don't want to these these words aren't yours, but you bring it. I, 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 you have to there feel are it. Times I I go I I don't want to talk to I don't I don't want to I don't want to. I didn't want yeah, to get on you know, the phone. It, 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 I didn't want like, to talk to anybody. Like, exactly. You know? It's like, yeah. you know, like, let's say you, 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 there's a piece of cherry pie in front of you, right? Let's, you can take a bite of the cherry pie and you can taste it, right? And, it, and that's fine. Or you can take the pie and you can rub it all over your face and never taste it. Still, it's fucking cherry pie and it's all over you. And, you know, whether you've fucking tasted it for real or not, it's still fucking cherry pie and you wear it and you can feel it on your face mm-hmm. you, yeah. all the way home every night. When I would put my head on the pillow, I, I would feel that cherry pie all over my face. And it was bothered me so much. Yeah. I, I went as far as, which is natural and should be done. I know. Mm-hmm. I realize that, but I would go as far as like thinking about like these young black actors that I'm working with, or even, um, Forrest, you know, who's, as we know, is like one of our best. And, and Amazing. I could put, picture him seeing, looking at me, calling him names. Ooh. You know, it's just like, wow, wow. You know, it's like, wow. Yeah. You know, let's not kid ourselves. You know, when we do a love scene with an actress in a movie, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's still apple pie. Like, you're, not, pie. Uh, you're, not yeah. gonna, you're not gonna make out, but the pie is all over your face. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> you feel it, and she feels it, and you feel it, and nobody's gonna do anything about it, obviously. But it's not like you don't feel it. Somebody's and feeling it. If you don't feel, you're not doing it right. <laughs> well, that's true. But I'm just saying that even though, even though it's. You, you're absolutely right. But I'm, saying this. but I'm saying this. The bigger point is that even if when you're doing it, it's still you keep it in an appropriate place, mm-hmm. you're still feeling it mm-hmm. regardless. And even in, in those scenes, like you're saying about tuning those guys up and what, what I was saying about Godfather Harlem, you're as appropriate as you can be, but it's fucking tough. It's tough, you know, 
I mean, back in the day, I wouldn't do it. Like I, I turned down John Singleton, who gave me, uh, offered me a part in his movie, one of his uh, big movies that he did, and asked me to play the main racist in the story. And I, I said, John, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. Right. I just turned it down. I mm -hmm. couldn't do it. And it's not like I had like a million jobs or anything. I just, I said, I can't, I wouldn't be able to live with myself. And, you know, to this day, I've never played a killer unless it was a continuous ongoing thing like Fisk, I've never played a killer that got away with it. I've always turned down parts where the killer walks away. Yeah. You know, it just, it's just, there's, uh, you know, for me, it's been, you know, that kind of thing, right? Yeah. It's hard because, you know, you know, we put our, we put our heart and soul into it. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Well, everything you guys put into it, the audience, picks it up and respects it. You know I mean? That's, they what, do, makes, they that's do. what makes it amazing. You know, yeah. but it's the yeah. sacrifice that you have to make. It's yeah. And I got in actually a little trouble because I kept on telling Chris, I don't know, Chris, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we were actually, we were in Sicily I was with my kids and um, he's like, what do you mean? You don't know. Like I had a vision in the church. He's like saying all this shit to me. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> had a vision in the church. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, the guy's like a brother. Hey, Vincenzo. <laughs> <laughs> whatever I like. he, he says the most you know you know we both treat each other like you know bros but yeah. um I, I would just say you know i'm really having a tough time and so without anybody's permission i don't know if i ever told you this don but on twitter i didn't name the project and i didn't name the character but i i put out is it appropriate this is right when trump got elected i put out is it appropriate in this climate to play an irredeemable racist for okay. me, for me to play an irredeemable racist. And I had a conversation with 5,000 people about it. Right. I saw that one. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. And 99.9% .9 of them said, you, if, especially you. Yeah. Because <laughs> it would make the point so much better. And that's, yeah. that's it, the point. It's not the actual words that are being used or the, it's the point. Like Archie Bunker was a racist. Yep. Exposing yeah, right? the stupidity. A bigot. A bigot yeah. racist. And everybody. The only way that works, it was out without, pulling, you can't pull budget. You can't. Yeah. 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 You actually, like, like you actually it's, yeah. You actually have to. Uh, you gotta go all yeah, the way. Yeah, yeah, you, ha you have to go all the way. You, you actually, to. when you, when you're in you, I don't know. But for me, when I when I when I put the clothes on, put the shoes on, mm -hmm. I put the, uh, the watch, whatever, whatever whatever I'm wearing, the wardrobe. I mentally, I agree with everything that my character is doing, in a weird, you sick, have, you have pathetic to way. I agree <laughs> with everything he's doing. That's it's it. when I take my makeup off, my wardrobe. I'm in the van, I get to the hotel or I get to my apartment. Mm -hmm. That's that's where things start renting space. It, in it's my amazing head. you guys could disconnect. You have, for me, that's to make whatever I'm doing as truthful and, and as authentic as possible, I have to really believe what this character believes in order for me to sell what I'm doing. Yeah. For me. Yeah. Still but then later on, there's consequences to that. There's a lot of collateral damage that comes along I with that. I believe it. A lot of collateral damage. <clears throat> yeah, and, like fucking nightmares and shit like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's why it's going to be nice to then take some some fun, lighter roles. Do you know why this that's is called that. Dom's Den? Because <laughs> Dominic's running. Do you know why this is called Dom's Den? Because Vincent D'Onofrio. Did you guys yeah, know that? Yes. <laughs> This, you named the show. You named the podcast. Yeah, he said Dominic's Den. Oh, right. Yeah. And then we, Vincent, we had to change it because oh. of... Irresponsibly, the, the, Dom the, has the, an E in, in Dominic, and people couldn't find it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> people could, kept spelling it. Oh, like, really? Oh, I like yeah, that. yeah, it's horrible. Yeah, They're like, uh, can you just change it to Dom's Den? I was like, okay. But we I put it out it. there, and Vincent yeah. answered the tweet. Yeah, He's right, like, right. Dominic's Den. I'm like, yeah, yeah man. <laughs> And I actually had it written down. Uh huh. I show. Uh, I actually had three he names written down, yeah. and D yeah. Dom's Den was one of them. Yeah. So I was like, <clears throat> if, if if me and Vincent are on the same page with this, that's what I'm going with. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so so now Dom's hot seat. Where I just throw off a couple of questions and you know, quick answers, uh, whatever comes to mind. 
Uh, what's one of your biggest pet peeves? Liars. Yeah. You're up on a karaoke stage. What's the song you're singing? <laughs> Sympathy for the Devil. Ooh. Uh, I finally. like that one. I right? love that one. I yeah. love this guy. <laughs> yeah, so do I. So do I. Yeah, that's, great. that's a great song. Um, this is probably, I, 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 this is a question I always throw out there. Uh, you could go back in time and give yourself a piece of advice. What's that piece of advice and how old are you? This one gets deep. Yeah. Uh, 19. You, you should have. Uh, how can I put this? I want to know what we're going to say. I, could go I, so I many want to know what he was going to say. I could go so many times. <laughs> she clearly invited you, Vincent. You should have taken her up on it. <laughs> I love that. The girl that got I me. love that. <laughs> it's great. Karen, you got a question? Oh yeah, yeah. I minor mine are a little deeper than Dom's. Uh if you're replenishing the toilet paper, uh, do you put the toilet paper rolling from the top or underneath from the bottom? Rolling from the top. Top, you're a top roll. Top, so are am you, I. You're, I don't care. I have a bottom <laughs> roller. I know. I, I, my wife yells me all the time, but again, the top, just, I don't know. Just have the paper top. in the bed. Because if, the, bo if the bottom roller, you want to know the truth? <laughs> <laughs> I don't use please, toilet paper. <laughs> Vincent, please don't encourage him. <laughs> I, I use loose. I left hand. No, no, no. <laughs> no. The truth is, is that I got used to getting so much trouble from my grandmother mm. in, in that be, for leaving the toilet paper loose on the spot on the spool. Oh yeah. She was a bot. She would have it on the bottom. That every time I used to go into the toilet, I would, I would turn it over. So that I could yeah. pull it from the type and just pull it off. And it would always be tight. She could never blame. And, but then she would go, who keeps turning over the toilet? Paper? <laughs> you couldn't win. You can never win. You know that. Vincent. That, that act, that's actually what started me doing it because I, I never was able to uh, figure out how to get a piece off it without it spooling. <laughs> Do you, you want to hold it and tear it off? Do I mean, you want to ask the notorious? No, 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 no. I want no, to know what Vincent. Wait, I want this, no, no, no. This is somebody this I is really Vincent respect. The question. <laughs> I really Vincent want to question. know what his opinion on. It's very yeah. simple. It's very simple. You're at someone's house and and you have to use the facilities. You go to the bathroom and you walk up and the door is closed. Are you going to stop and knock on the door or are you going to just try the handle and see if it's unlocked? No, you knock. Dang it! Yes. Sophisticated people. Yeah, yeah, I've learned my lesson. I've I learned not my lesson. Pat, please <laughs> come to this side. I like a good story. So if I I'm, if I unlock, <laughs> if I roll that knob and I walk in, you're an whatever, animal. Whatever's behind door number two, you know, it's like yeah. so except, be it. Except except unless you're what's behind door number two. No. I, it's a free show. Go listen, ahead. if I if I don't lock the door, if I don't lock the door, it's on me. It's yeah. on me. Whatever well, I'm of the there. I'm of the ilk of like. Do not do anything to anybody you would not want done yeah. to yourself. Yeah. 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 No, I, no. I had previously been um, interrupted in many, many odd situations <laughs> by people bursting into the bath bathroom door. I don't bust in like Kramer, okay? It's a slow turn. By the time I get, well, anyway. Okay. You yeah. Yeah. I've learned my lesson. You're, you're losing I've learned this. learned my lesson. Sure, they, you're losing this. Hopefully, no, we I, could turn you I'm into a polite person ways. who knocks. I'm, not, I'm a polite person. Bro, I would you don't keep lock the door. It's on you. It if I I would do. If I was you, I'd keep doing it. I just want to tell you something, guys. Keep doing it, but it's very fucking creepy. It's creepy that you like it. Okay? <laughs> but it's a free world. It's a free world. <laughs> the, man, the man makes a good point. I purposely don't lock my door. In the bed. <laughs> that's creepy. That's, that's creepy. That's, that's, that's even creepier. I just like the moment, his version of just opening it, like, you know where my mind goes immediately, Dom? It goes no. to, like, him putting his, like, what's going on in his head? He's putting his hand on the doorknob. He's turning the thing. He knows exactly what, like, where is he, is he in, like, a jungle? Like, is he wearing a diaper in a desert? Like, where the fuck is he? I, saw, I, I see with no caution. 
You proceed with no caution. <laughs> when you got to go, you got to go. <laughs> That's the interesting part to me is what's going on in his head when he knows he's a deviant motherfucker and he's like, That's it. A deviant. You know what? You deviant. never know what's going to happen. <laughs> You're an animal. You're an animal. <laughs> Thank you for clearing the air. Not only are you a Kansas City Chiefs fan, but you're also an animal. I got multiple problems. Okay. That's how I got into the dance. You know? Join the club. Join the club. Uh, what are you watching these days? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, what is it called? Um, for All Mankind. Is that what it's called? I think it is. The Apple show about the, about. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, Apollo. Um, the, the, the NASA, the, the history of NASA done. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. Altered, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's through a Soviet Union got to the moon right. first, right? It yeah, was about the, the race. Altered everything yeah. where they were already done with the moon by 1992 and heading to Mars. And you're wrapped up on Godfather of Harlem, completed wrapped the second season? Yeah, I'm sure okay. there's going to be a third season, but yeah. Okay. And there's a million other shit things happening that I'm not allowed to talk about. Okay. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, there's a lot of stuff. You're not allowed to talk about there. anything these days. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Hopefully all good. It's like, I, I remember Woody Allen used to be the only one you weren't allowed to talk about. Now you can't talk about anything. Mm. <laughs> Did you see that documentary? Yeah. That's yeah, hard cool. to watch. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah difficult it's, to watch. It's hard to watch. I, I just, you know, it's just, you know, it's just so tough on, on, on the, on his family. It's just so hardcore, man. I can't imagine living that. Yeah. He, he, he the, be, the mother and the daughter and, it's just it's, you can just see how messed up everybody wow. everybody's hurting so bad you know that's the thing that stands out the most to me you know um you know it's hard to be a um to, uh, to be an audience member and watch that unfold in front of you it's like um mm -hmm. you feel like you're you're um it's like that feeling that people must have had when lions were tearing apart human beings and and Coliseum and Coliseums, mm -hmm. you know, that's what it kind of feels like to me. It's uh, it's extraordinary what goes on in, in uh, what you can Crazy. do with film and, and, and these days in storytelling. It's like beyond me. It left me with a very, very, very uncomfortable feeling and, and, and really saddened for the family. Really very sad. Yeah. So many parts, too. It's just so much. And you, you had to just once you started, you had to keep going. Yes, to see I mean, I've thing. never, you know, I never, I've never met any of those people. And, you know, maybe I would feel differently if I had, if I knew some of them, you know, like really knew them, but I don't. So I just, you know, at some point I decided that, uh, that I wasn't going to finish watching it because I just. This just, is a I, tough watch. I just, no, I just, I honestly, God, I can't explain it any better than what I just said. Yeah. I just felt like watching yeah. a, a gladiator fight. It was like yeah, mm, watching, much. you know, watching, uh, a real life or lives being torn up to shreds in front of you. Um, it was just, Oh my God. I mean, especially, I don't know. I haven't a sucker for women and I just I you know, the suffering that's going on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is the dog around you? <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Happy. I mean, happy. I'm not here right now. No. Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I'm like, so what kind of dog. We have two rescues. Oh, and one's, yeah. a, one's a one's a pup. Timmy's like just over a year now, but um, I've recorded a lot of his life on uh, Twitter. Or something. Mm -hmm. I will say, uh, Vincent, uh, you're inadvertently responsible for the name of my production company. Oh yeah, because my partner Chase, uh, he said, you know, he's a husky fella, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> he used to big wake, bones, big bones, big bones. <laughs> He used to wake up at my house uh, hungover and he'd walk through like pushing my little like two year old children out of the way going, mm, sugar water, need sugar water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's and the name always, of the production? It always made me smile. So I named my production company Sugar Water Entertainment. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> it always makes me smile. Sugar water. <laughs> as, as my son goes flying out of the way. <laughs> yeah. If you would have had just told me the name of your production company, I would have pretty much guessed that's where you got yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Did I'm I ever so tell you, do you want to hear one last story? Did I ever tell you the whole deal about, uh, Dom, have I ever told you about the whole thing, uh, the story behind the, me getting the part in Men in Black and all that? 
No. Oh, no. 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 Please no. go God. ahead. Yeah. You want to just end the interview with that? Yeah. I, w- I would love it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, a woman named Stacy Share, who used to be, she used to run Danny DeVito's company when she was younger. Now she produces all Tarantino's movies. But we were friends. We had done a couple of films together, I believe, by then. And um, she's one, one of the best Hollywood producers I've ever met a true artist herself. Anyway, she calls me one day out of the blue and she says, I have a script that Barry Sonnenfeld wants to give you. And I'm so, oh, Barry Sonnenfeld, great. I love that guy. You know, I had known that he was like the DP for Raimi and for the Coen brothers and stuff. I knew that he'd become a director. And uh, I'm like, oh, cool. She goes, but there's a, there's a, there's one thing though, a caveat. And I said, well, what's that? She goes, you have to promise that you'll never talk to him about acting or about your performance or anything to do with the character. And I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> she goes, well, no, she goes, I'm, I'm serious. And I'm like, yeah, okay, it's fine. And uh, so, you know, a few days later we met somewhere and she gave it to me. And um, I'm like, oh, this is so exciting. I went home, <laughs> I take it out of the envelope and I crack it open and it's a fucking alien who tears the inside of a guy's body out and wears his body for the whole fucking movie. And I'm not supposed to, I'm not allowed to talk to the director about it. And there's no like, there's no like description of how the guy looked or sounded or anything. It's just, he had these, a goofy line here, a goofy line there. But meanwhile, he's the whole baddie through the whole movie. And I'm like, Oh, great. And, and, but it was a great script. I it was, it was, you know, Tommy and, Lee Jones and, and you know, they, those guys were attached to it. And I, I was like, this is going to be great. And I, so I said, yes. And, um, you know, I wasn't allowed to talk to him. So <laughs> I was living with my friend Steve Marshall at the time. This is in LA, actually. I was living in LA. And I was watching like documentaries on bugs. And, you know, I was like, oh, we're like, we would smoke a joint. We'd watch like a documentary on like, <laughs> I'll, I'll never forget, I'll never forget. We're sitting on the couch. I had this great stoner couch. We're sitting on it and I'm watching a beetle cross a wooden porch and the camera zooms in and then tracks along with the bug. And I'm like, oh, fuck it. I got up, I turn the TV off. I'm like, I fucking give up. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. And I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm real, I'm in real trouble. And I, so I started to like think through it and try to make sense of it. And I'm walking by the sporting goods store on um, Santa Monica Boulevard, I think mm. it was. And in the window, it was the first time I had ever seen what basketball players could, wore on their knees during games if they had bad knees, those braces. Mm-hmm. And it just, I could fucking get those and tie them off and lock my legs. Because if it's a gigantic bug trying to fit into this guy's body, he wouldn't be able to move. Can't bend his knees. Uh It's really hard to move. So I went and I bought two of those braces. They cost a lot of money back then. And I went to the hardware store. I bought a big roll of duct tape and I bought um, paint mixers, wooden paint mixers. And I locked off my legs with the, with the, with the duct tape and the and the things for my knees, the basketball <laughs> rate. And then I locked off my ankles with the same way, but we used the, um, the wooden sticks. I put my sneakers on over it. And I, so my legs are bent slightly locked off and my ankles are bent slightly locked off. And I just tried to walk normal. And that's how I got the walk, <laughs> right? And, and I just would walk around the house for hours and try to set up obstacles for myself. And through that, I learned all these like bizarre moves and shit. And I'm like, that's it. He's stuck <laughs> in this body and he's angry because he has to do this thing. And he can't believe that he got, he has to wear this human body and he resents it and he's pissed off and he's frustrated. And so then I just used something in my life that got me that way, which was somebody that I had worked with once. <laughs> and and that just drove me mad when I thought about it. And and then I had to come up with a voice. And I had I got um, I had uh, Danny Houston was John Houston's son, and 
I, I was always, because Danny talked a bit, had a same, sort of the same accent as his father, but not, you know, his father talked like this, like pond scum. And, you know, he had this John Huston talk yeah. in a very kind of, you know, particular kind of voice, you know. And I thought, you know, I thought he would, that's a perfect voice, but it was too slow and it would take me an hour to do a scene. And my friend Steve and I, that night, we were watching, this is all true, we were watching um, Dr. Strangelove and George C. Scott <laughs> and Dr. Strangelove, who talked like this, God damn it, what are, you, what are you kidding me, you know, like that. And I combined those two voices and I made the voice of the guy, but I was never allowed to talk to the director. So now I had his posture, I had his voice, I had figured it all out. Rick and I worked for days and hours and hours. He was doing the makeup. I was honing the voice down in the movements. And as he would put makeup on me, I would figure it out with the voice. We had a blast, him and I, for months. <laughs> Still, we did the, we did these, the um, wardrobe test, the makeup test. I didn't say a word. I didn't say anything. I never moved. I just turned around for them with the costume. Nobody asked me to do anything. It was like perfect. Crazy. Now, the first day of shooting comes... And I'm all taped up in my room, which I did myself, you know, put the costume on. I make my way to set. He's in there already. And it's this, the first scene is, um, is in a barn where uh, I kill an orchid man. I have to cross from the entrance of the barn over okay, to the yeah, orchid yeah, man. Yeah, the yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I have this speech. Actually, it's a <laughs> bond kind of speech, actually. And so no rehearsal, just the AD saying, I'm going to go. I can see Barry over there. Uh, Super sweet dude, by the way. Um, and uh, smoking his cigar and, and you know, where he says action. And so first take, big wide, me crossing the barn there. And I don't know, and I start the speech and I start to walk and I'm over there and I hear, cut. Oh no. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well that was probably a technical thing. That's okay, I'm, I'll go back to my mark. And I realized as I was going back, he was talking to the first and people start leaving. So he had cleared the set. <laughs> um, and the, the, the working man actor walks by me, doesn't have eye contact with me, and walks by. And everybody's gone. The first AD leaves, and it's just um, Barry and I. And Barry talks like this, you know. He's like, talks very similar to this. He goes, he goes Vincent. And I'm like, yeah. He goes, um, can you do that again? And I'm like, you mean you want me to do the scene again? He goes, can you do it for me one more time? And I'm like, uh, okay, yeah. And so I do it. And he goes, oh, 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 cut. He goes, um, and, and you're gonna, this is how you're gonna do it, the whole thing like this. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, um, well, I said something like a real, really a smart ass thing, which was the first time I ever said it, but I say it all the time now on set when a director's asked me to do too many takes. I say this all the time, but this is originated with saying it to him. I said, yeah, Barry, that's the extent of my talent. That's all I've got. <laughs> and, uh, and he goes, um, so I'm wondering if I should be, <laughs> I should be worried about this. <laughs> And I said, <laughs> I, I said, I, I can see why you feel about that. I've been working on it really hard. And I said, my opinion is, is that it works. And I said to him, I've gone through every scene in my mind doing it this way. And it's not going to impede on the story. In fact, it's going to help the story in so many ways. I said to him, really? And I'm like, yeah. He goes, all right. Oh, okay. And he brought everybody back in and he never spoke to me. And a month goes by and we're still shooting. And I don't know if I'm getting fired. Like, I don't know anything, <laughs> you know? And um, all I know is that Barry's having a great time doing this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and we're just shooting away and everybody's happy and i'm doing my thing and i'm doing i'm getting more confident with it even not knowing if the director i'm going to get fired the next day i'm just getting more and more confident and uh, one day um i forget who it was but i think it was 
the guy who used to run um, Amblin for Spielberg and, and, and Barry and I think it was a couple of guys. They were in my, they had said, they said to me, you know, we, we made these uh, $500,000 puppets of your character um, for the end where it comes out of your body. Wow. And we've, we spent, we built two of them. And I'm like, oh yeah. He goes, yeah, but we can't use them now. Um, because your character, uh, we can't match how interesting your character moves to the puppet. It looks too boring. And so we're going to have to do, we're going to have to trash those <laughs> and, and, like, and do like CGI version of the, of the character. And I like, I'm like, oh, oh, oh okay. Uh, all right. Sorry about that. You know, like I didn't know really what, know what to say, you know? And, uh, and so I then basically to end the story quicker, um, I don't know how many years, 15 years goes by or something like that. And I get this call from Barry and he, he's, I, it might be longer. He was, he had done, he had, he was doing a series on television and he invited me and one of my sons to come into the premiere of it um, in this small theater in, in Manhattan. And we went to it and, you know, I walk in and he comes over and he gives me this giant hug. And he basically for the first time ever said to me, you know how much I love you, right? You know how much I appreciated what you did. I'm like that on the thing. And like, he goes, and, and he gave me this big hug and everything. And it's, it's just like, it's so much explains what our business is like. Yeah, you know, that's like amazing. You, you can't, you can't, like that guy, Barry, gave me such a gift to give me that part because I was able to do so much with it, you know? And that's never, freedom. but it just doesn't, it didn't turn out to be like what you would imagine. Like it was tough to, to get away with it, you know? It, it, I took a big chance. Big chance. Know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he, the idea of somebody like Barry Sonnefeld going with this actor that he had never worked with before, didn't know from Adam, and did, trust did, me. Did Wardrobe know you were putting uh, the things on the <laughs> list? And the that's, that's, that's ball. That's a, that's, yeah, but that's if, a if, tough. If there's no communication going on, you can't blame Vincent for sure. Oh, they'll blame you. Okay, for the well, finger away I, I think. No, I think that the overall point of the thing is, at least for me, is that I will always hold it so dear to me that Barry trusted me back yeah, then. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I put him in a way I couldn't, I had no other choice, like what you're mm -hmm. saying. But in a way, I, I put him so on the spot with wow. such an extreme version of what they had. I didn't wow. change his word, by the way. And hopefully that, those uh, hopefully those wardrobe people would knock before they come into the, the dressing yeah. room. <laughs> <laughs> and God bless him for rolling with the punches too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll never look at knee braces and paint stirrers the same. Yeah. <laughs> I'll never will. <laughs> um, Vincent, thank you so much. You're welcome, dude. Thank you. Outstanding. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I'm a big fan. Love you. Yeah. Great awesome. stuff. My brother. Talk to you, Dominic. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Thanks again, Vincent. Yep. See you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.